Je m'appelle Louis Leterrier, je suis réalisateur de films, je suis français, je vis et je travaille à Los Angeles. Mais aujourd'hui, je suis à San Francisco, car c'est ici que la majorité des jeux auxquels vous et moi jouons sont créés. Étant fan de jeux, je voulais confronter mon expérience des cinéastes et rencontrer des créatifs du monde du jeu vidéo et leur poser des questions, à savoir comment est-ce qu'on faisait un jeu, par où on commençait, combien de temps ça a duré. Donc j'ai eu la chance qu'un grand studio m'ouvre ses portes. How you doing? Good. I'm Steve Pfutzis, executive producer for Dead Space 2. Welcome to the studio. Let's uh, take a look at how we make video games. Great, thanks. So Steve, how many people are working on the game? Well, here we've got over 100 developers working on this project. And how long did it take them? It's uh, been taken over two years so far. Wow. Uh, should we check it out? Let's do it. So there's no director, right, in a, on a video game, right? So you sort of do that, right? That's sort of your job, right? Well, there's a lot of different people on a video game project. We do have an art director. We've okay. got an audio director. The executive producer is the person that oversees the entire project. So I essentially work with everybody, and I'm the person that's kind of keeping an eye on the entire project and uh, making sure that it, it measures up to what our players expect. Games, obviously, it's all about interactivity. It's like, you know, me as a filmmaker, I'm sort of like guiding the audience to feel something. You are letting them free, like, you know, sort of like poking at them, but, you know, uh, this is like th the game that scared me the most. I mean, you know, Dead Space 1 is like the, the only game that I was ever scared of, you know? Awesome. I know, but really, it's like, it, it, it's like, it's better than any horror movie because you're really on focus. You're listening to everything. You're moving around. <gasps> what did I hear? Boom, you get scared. And really, you strive for that. But, but I found like, you're pushing the limits of what's possible to fill uh, with a game. Well, I think, you know, that's one place where, you know, filmmaking has really been able to do all kinds of things. It's made people scared. It made, makes people laugh. It makes people cry. And I think that that's, you know, something that we aspire to, to kind of getting that emotional reaction. Uh, you know, being able to set up a player so that they're really scared is something that, you know, on the Dead Space team, we really work hard towards doing. But I think there's a lot of other things, you know, getting psychological horror, making people frightened to be in their home, or, you know, even like getting them to feel really connected and sad for a player. I think one of the things that, you know, great stories do is they pull you into the story, right? They don't, they don't say, you need to care about this guy because of X, Y, Z. They make you care about that person because the story unfolds and you find that there's something there that you like. And I think that's what we really aspire to do. Um, de definitely with our franchise, we really want to get people to enjoy the story and feel compelled to, to play and continue to experience it. And hopefully at the same time, scare the crap out of them. Oh wow, what's this, Steve? So Louis, this is really kind of the beginning of making our game. This is essentially what we're doing during pre-production. I would imagine this is similar to what you might do when you're making a film. It's where, very similar, yeah. Where we sit down and we map out everything in the game. So we've got like the key shots or set piece moments. We've, we've got color guides. We've got the maps. We've got the character lists, the story beats for each of the individual chapters. And again, I, I'm guessing it's very similar to what you do. It's it's literally, um, it's like I'm watching a movie right here. It's like, you know, I, it, and it's very helpful for us because we're seeing the entire film. And I guess the same thing for you guys, you see the entire game. Well, that is the big reason we do this is because it allows us to establish what those big moments are gonna be. It's a lot easier to make changes, modifications here, uh, instead of doing it once we're into 3D when everybody's modeling the assets and the characters. This is the color tone that, that our art director wants. These are the key moments, the way that the map looks, the characters. It's all here as a reference guide for the team. And your cast also, yeah. Yeah, we've got the actors that are mm -hmm. actually used in the game right here. We've mm -hmm. got the color guides over there. Mm -hmm. we've got some other creature designs right there. Scary. So now we're going to go ahead and introduce you to Colin Hennon, who's our cinematics director. Mm -hmm. And he's the guy that works with all the talented animators and character modelers to actually create and bring some of those scenes you saw to life. Mm. So right this way, Big Lou. Hey, Colin. Hey. Hi, I'm Louis. Hey, Louis. Nice to meet <laughs> nice you. Nice to meet you. May I sit down? Of course. It's a yes. pretty tight space, but... All right. What'd you do here? 
Well, what I'm looking at here <clears throat> is a uh, cinematic from our game. Mm -hmm. um, so cinematic is what? Is when the game stops and then? Uh, no, <clears throat> with our game, the game doesn't really stop. Really? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no, well, there's no cuts in our game, really. Um, we try to flow as smoothly from gameplay into a story scene. Um, as possible, and um, not really make it feel like the the player doesn't have control. Anymore. Okay, I get it. Okay. Yeah. So in this scene, um, the main character Isaac actually uh, meets one of the main female characters, uh, the female interest really, um, named Ellie. But where this all starts is on the mocap stage. Motion capture is. Um, the way we grab an actor's performance. And, and the way it's done is um, there are a bunch of reflective balls placed on key locations um, on a performer. And we're capturing their um, positions in 3D space with the use of super sensitive um, high resolution cameras. And each of those cameras has a big ring of LEDs in front of the lens. And so each camera is seeing a two-dimensional um, view of that actor in space. So there's yeah. 250 cameras maybe in, in this room, maybe even more, probably more. Um, and each of those cameras is seeing its own view of that um, performance. And all that data is um, triangulated into a cloud of where those actual little reflective markers were in space. And then that cloud is processed into actual joint rotations. Um, so we get the character. And face. And face, too. Wow. Yeah. This is what the, the stage looks like. We've set up these little stands, these C stands, which are usually used for microphones, are um, the gate that here that's in front of my rick. This gate. Right here? Yeah. Okay. So the actor knows not to get too close into uh -huh. the scene. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And then um, these two boxes right here, these stacks of boxes, are the door, the elevator door that Ellie needs to go through. Right. And this, um, this big truss here is the control panel she's working on back there. Okay. You almost direct the actors on the set. Yeah. I work with the animators. Um, to uh, get the fidelity of the, the human performance that we have, and then also bring their creative talents to bear on the, on the data and make it a really interesting performance. So it's the same people here, uh, the same actors, so doing the performance mm -hmm. capture right here. Yeah. So it's their voice, their face, it's their yep. body to do this. Yep. So I see microphones, I see booms, I see all that stuff. So it's all captured. It's all same captured. Time. So really, it's acting. It's not like you know animation where guys in front of a uh, of, a, of a piece of paper act, you know, just saying lines. It's right, like right. proper acting. Yeah, and so we try to provide the actors with as accurate a scene for them to play in as possible. We will show them the game and actually show them, um, you know, allow them to play through, or we'll show them exactly how we'll play through this, yeah. so they'll be able to see, you know, in context mm. what what their um, performance, where it will be. How we'll see it. The creatures are exactly. animated. Okay. Yeah, we can't really motion yeah, capture a, a creature, a space zombie just yeah. yet. <laughs> what? Yeah, and that space zombie actor is out there. You yeah, know it. Well, we had, <laughs> we had some auditions, but it didn't work. I'll release the door lock, but after that, you're on your own. And please, don't follow me, okay? Wait, wait. What is this, Steve? Well, Louis, this is some really cool stuff that's been submitted by the players of Dead Space. And without these guys, we wouldn't have had a chance to make Dead Space 2. It's super inspiring for the team to see all the passion and energy people put in that's great. Uh, to all this great stuff. So I see paintings, statues, tattoos. That's amazing. A pumpkin. It's all fan work, fan artwork, right? They send it to you, and then yep. they send it in, and and we put it up here because it's really inspiring that's for very the team. That's inspiring, right? Yeah. What else goes into making a game then? Well, I think just as in film, yeah. audio is a huge part of making a game. Fifty I mean, it's, percent it's of the film. Fifty percent of the atmosphere. It's it's so immersive. So let's go meet uh, our audio director, Andrew Boyd. Andrew Boyd. Hello. Hi, I'm Louis. I'm Andrew Boyd. Hi. I'm audio director. 
Welcome. Audio director. Ah, so you do, you're in charge of everything. Any sound, sound and music? Uh, sound, all music, over the dialogue, game, yeah. everything. All right. Colin was explaining to me, you record sound as you're doing performance capture, right? We do. We record the voice as much as we can. We get it there on the stage because I really want that, the performance, mm. you know. We, we do a lot of ADR work also, um, but but if we can, I really want the performance of the actors interacting with each other. I think it really ups the ups the game. Do you add music from the original uh, uh, game? Did you have to? Did they have to? Did he have to rewrite uh, some more music? Well, yeah, we wrote another. We did another full uh, set of sessions. So we actually did four recording sessions at Skywalker Sound, um, and it was about 80 minutes of new uh, content um, recorded for this game. We wanted to do something specific. You know, we wanted to we wanted to expand the palette a bit on Dead Space 2 from what we had on Dead Space 1. It's pretty much like a movie. I mean, it's like you know, you're doing. You're mixing, or designing, doing everything like a movie, but more, right? I mean, sure. Um, well, yeah. Let me show you one of the yeah. one of the things. Uh, we've got some new enemies uh, in Dead Space too. So new uh, monster characters that are going to attack you. Uh, one of them we affectionately refer to as the puker, mm. uh, for <laughs> reasons that should become obvious. Uh, I think we're about to meet him here uh, in this location. Mm -hmm. So let's talk. Let's take a look at it, and then we can talk a little about how we go about making these okay. uh, sounds. So I'm Isaac, just minding my own business. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Do you mix at the end? You do like a do. special um, mix down? It's, it's different than a film uh -huh. in that the mix is, happens at runtime. The mix happens while you're playing the game. So. We, we create a number of uh, sort of snapshot states in the mix, uh, but it has to be assembled by the game because we don't know what the player is going to do. We don't know how they're going to fight a combat, which door they're going to go through at any given time. So what we do is create a set of rules by which the game can mix itself. Um, it's a very different kind of process. But frankly, the only time you hear your mix, your total sound, is when you play the game, yep. right? Got to so play the game. That's the only way you can listen to it. That right? is it. So you play your game. You, that's cool. So there's a great fun aspect to your thing because you're like two years of work, but six months of playing my game. Because <laughs> I need to, to trouble check my game. Yeah, that's my, right. My sound design. That's right. That's great. Yeah. I mean, you know, with of course the caveat that sometimes you got to play that same 10 second sequence 400 times. <laughs> but <laughs> you end, get a little. It gets a little much. Trust me, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's yeah. the same as in film. Same, I'm sure you watch that film. same scene over and over. I wish sometimes it was interactive. <laughs> I wish sometimes it was interactive. And then yeah. you sound. You, you're cool. Special effects, right? The puking yeah. sound. <laughs> that stuff. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait. Uh, how do you get this sound? Well, so this was one, one of the sound designers. Uh, it begins with a vocalization. All of these enemies were once human. And they've become horribly distorted of by course, this, yeah. you know, yeah. transformation to becoming these necromorph creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, so we generally start with human sounds. So this was actually one of the sound designers went, put himself in the studio, and dry heaved for, <laughs> in fact, to the point where he made himself sick. Uh, it was, but you know that's commitment, right? You gotta, you gotta commit to the effects. So. Also, these gurgling sounds <clears throat> to really sweeten this stuff up. <clears throat> Which are which are food <laughs> sounds. So so we did a couple of different things to get these sounds. One was the sound designer baked up a big pot of uh, split pea soup, and uh, started adding adding different thickeners to it. He added oatmeal to it, and he added cornstarch to it, and then he blew bubbles into it with a straw and got these great gurgling, bubbling sounds. And it's a passion project. I mean, everything you work on is like it must be so exciting. It is. It is. It's who gets to come to work. And make the sound of a guy, yeah, uh, um, a, a <laughs> zombie puking. puking on another zombie. You know, come on, that's great. You know, you, that's you, that's your <laughs> <a good> job. <laughs> and Steve, you have French people working on this game, right? Sure do, Louis. As a matter of fact, Veronique Garcia is our character craft director, mm. and she's the person that works on the characters. So here she is right now. Veronique. Bonjour, je suis Bonjour, Bonjour, enchanté. enchanté. Je peux m'asseoir Ben oui. Qu'est-ce que vous faites exactement sur Dead Space Alors, j'ai le rôle de character craft director. Character craft director. <rire> tout le monde a un nom <rire> ronflant et on ne sait pas du tout ce que ça veut dire. Alors, c'est directeur de la modélisation et des textures des personnages. Et mon rôle, plus précisément, 
et d'assurer que la vision du directeur artistique est comprise et respectée par tous les artistes. Ah, en fait, on est vraiment, euh, je veux dire, au début de la chaîne de la production, on est les actions et textures. Ensuite, ça va au côté euh, rigging, mm. c'est la, la création du squelette pour le personnage. Mm. Ensuite, animation mm. et ensuite euh, intégration dans, dans le jeu. Donc, on est vraiment au début de la chaîne. Ah, oui. Ça, c'est le concept. Mm. Donc, euh, c'est ce qui nous est donné pour commencer à construire le personnage. D'accord. Voilà. Donc, ça, c'est pas animé, c'est que de la 2D. Exactement. Voilà, c est, c est... Donc, à partir de là, il ben, faut construire euh, Isaac. Mmh. Voilà. Donc ça c'est un de ses costumes. D'accord. Tout ça est dessiné une première fois. Et dessiné une première fois et euh, modélisé, modélisé une, seconde une seconde fois, fois. et animé. Et animé. On peut dire que euh, rien qu'en modélisation, mmh. un costume comme ceci avec euh, le casque peut prendre jusqu'à huit semaines. Oh. Moi j'ai vu que les acteurs, les acteurs qui avaient été donc engagés pour faire les voix, étaient aussi les acteurs qui faisaient leur motion capture. Est-ce que c'est des acteurs qu'on qu reconnaît à l'écran en fait Est-ce que c'est vraiment leur tête qu on, qu on, que vous avez utilisée Oui, tout à fait. Donc on prend euh, des photos à 360 degrés de chaque acteur. On a un système de projection qui nous aide à projeter toutes ces, ces photos. C'est-à-dire c'est comme une espèce de papier peint en fait, vous prenez la, la texture de leur... Voilà, exactement, de chaque, de chaque photo de 360 degrés et ça nous permet de, de créer le, le modèle, le visage en suivant exactement... Couleur de peau, texture... La silhouette. De... Voilà, ça c'est un humain. Mm -hmm. Ça c'est facile. Ouais, ça, facile. <rire> une créature. <rire> une créature. Ce qui n'est pas toujours plus facile parce qu'en fait, on... tout le monde reconnaît les humains. Oui c'est vrai. Voilà. Non, oui, c'est vrai, donc tout le monde donc, a une tout référence. Tout le monde a quelque chose à ah, dire. Une référence. Ouais, <rire> on a une référence. Exactement, euh... c'est ça. Alors là, par contre, euh, on utilise e-brush. Mm. Ça, ça permet euh, de, de faire de la modélisation comme, comme de la sculpture. Comme si on travaillait avec de la clé. Ouais, je comprends. Quand on connaît les, les créatures de Dead Space, tous ces nécromorphes, et, et qu'après on me rencontre, on. Oui, c'est ça. Ah, mais je vois très bien. Comment parce qu'en fait, ils ne vous connaissent pas. Moi, je vous connais un voilà, peu personnellement oui, maintenant, mais je vois très bien une véritable méchanceté voilà. devant ça. Donc ça surprend un peu tout le monde, mais euh, et moi, je m'amuse beaucoup. Vous êtes parti aussi d'un dessin en 2D D'un dessin en 2D, voilà. Et donc, vous l'avez modélisé C'est mon modèle que vous allez voir qui est dans le jeu, en fait. D'accord. Et aussi simple que ça. D'accord. Et, et ça, c'est à peu près ce qu'on voit dans le jeu C'est ce qu'on voit dans le jeu. C'est le modèle qui est dans le jeu, en fait. Comment on utilise les couleurs mmh. En fait, on a toute une librairie. Ah oui, génial. De, de textures. De, de textures. Donc, euh, on utilise vraiment des, des images réelles. Ça, c'est des images de cuir, des images de pierre. Euh... Ça fait vraiment une, une réelle différence. On a l'impression que c'est. Alors que c'était très euh, liquide voilà. et pustulant. Là, on dirait que c'est de la pierre. C'est super. Bon, bah, c'est génial. C'est le plus beau métier du monde. Oui. Créer des monstres. <rire> Vous créez des monstres. Vous créez des monstres. J'adore. Et ça, qu'est-ce que c'est C'est amazing. Well, this is just a bunch of different art that uh, that we've put together. It's some of the signage from the world that you know just really kind of helps make people feel immersed in what we're doing. Mm. Who does all that stuff? Well, it's a lot of different people that do it, but uh, why don't we go over here and meet Ian Millam, mm -hmm. our franchise art director, and he can talk to you all about it. All right, let's go. It's right over here. Oh, ah, see, convenient. Hey, Ian, I'm Louis. Hey, Louis, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Steve. I'm basically in charge of how the whole game looks. Great. So making yeah. sure that this whole team of people, that all their stuff, when it's done, ends up looking cohesive and good and like one person did it. So that's visual effects, user interface, animation, characters, concept, sets, everything. Science fiction is more common in yeah. games than it is in film. Yeah, of course. And so there's been a lot of spacemen, and there's a lot of space marines and all that kind of stuff, and, and we didn't, we wanted to avoid that and yeah, design something more iconic. Okay. So we spent a whole first year just drawing and painting right. until we... we had something that we thought was, that would make it all the way through. And yet it's a horror story, so people need to believe it on a very fundamental Absolutely. level. So when we talk about what makes us scared, we I'm always looking for um, things in my life that have sort of made me uncomfortable. We based a lot of the the lights in the spaceship on the lights at the dentist office. Oh, yeah, yeah. We always try to bring in those little details, because then when we really make something up, those little details give it a credibility that's important when you're trying to tell a story. So you still watch a lot of movies? Are you oh, inspired? I mean, of course. Uh, 
And it's tricky though, because you can get yourself into a trap because so many people are, are inspired by the same movies. It feels like amongst our generation, so much of the future uh, is determined by James Cameron. Yeah. And so there were specific things very early, especially when we were, we wanted to, our game has a sci-fi setting, but a horror heart. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to avoid the James Cameron Terminator 2 light blue filter yeah. on everything, yeah. or the green, uh, bl green black sliminess of Alien, specifically because yeah. they're so influential that you're going to end up not necessarily looking like them, but looking like a lot of other games if you go with them too much. Um, for what we tried to do a lot of was, uh, in terms of inspiration, David Fincher, mm. not so much for subject matter or um, camera style, because we don't have a camera, but for color and frame in terms of his his movies have a, they tend to be very monochromatic at any given time. They'll be very, very sort of ochre and umber, but then they'll be more green. And scene to scene, he pushes the color yeah. very far. Yeah. And David Fincher's movies have a decay and an oiliness, yeah. uh, you know, seven, Fight Club, yeah. and a grit. The patina um, that just mm, like, Exactly, yeah, the patina yeah, yeah. on yeah. it that we really tried to get. And then for just, um, in terms of how they handled horror, I think, um, John Carpenter, mm, um, right. The Thing especially, yeah, is an right. obvious influence yeah. in that sort of uh, when to show the monster, when not to show the monster, the use of light and shadow, that kind of stuff. We also, much like film, storyboard a lot of the game as well. It, it, but you do this knowing that the player will be able to interact. You don't just mm -hmm. do this for cinematic. It does seem a little funny to storyboard something when we don't control the camera. Yeah, but still. But it's important in terms of um, Sometimes we will have to figure out very critical, um, like blocking moves and stuff for motion capture. Okay. And we need to carefully plan out okay. what the characters' moves will all be and that sort of stuff. What do you think is the future of gaming? In 10 years, will it look totally realistic, fully immersive? Well, we obviously, just like film, have a way to go to get completely yeah. believable human characters. That because in one thing that we have that, that films don't, is we don't have days to render a frame. Yeah. We have a 30th of a second to render a frame. Yeah. So the, the detail there, we still can get more in. I think we can still pack more in. And then I think um, 3D will obviously a big, be a big leap forward. Stereo 3D. Stereo yeah. 3D. Yeah. And then I think better fidelity of performance in general, more. I, yes, we can add more detail, but it's just like, yes, maybe the visual effects in movies have gotten a lot better in the past 10 years. But that doesn't mean that movies have gotten a lot no, better you're right, in the yeah, past yeah, 10 yeah. years. And only when someone makes very good use of them does does it really sort of, when it makes, when the visual effects tell a better story, yeah. or more emotional involvement, <laughs> that's the when the effects kill the effects, almost the same things. Games are just now, as movies were, getting to that point where, where people are not going to just, good graphics are just, uh, they have to have good graphics, yeah. but that's not going to sell yeah. them by themselves. Right. That's just that's just the barrier to entry. You have to have great yeah. graphics. But beyond that, is it in great? Is it engaging? Is it fun? Yeah. Is it great? All right, final question. Tomorrow, I'm producing a movie, mm. and I want you to direct it. It's a horror movie. It takes place in space. Yes. And I say, but the only caveat is that you have to leave your work here and never come back here. Will you do it? Oh, um, well, <laughs> no, no. Don't take this the wrong way, but no. <laughs> No, I enjoy what I'm doing. That was the right answer. Yeah, All right, good. cool, Ian. Thanks, man. All right, thank you. Il y a réellement un huitième art, c'est-à-dire que le septième art c'est le cinéma, et que le huitième art c'est c'est le jeu vidéo, et qu'on peut vraiment faire des choses complètement créatives, complètement artistiques. Le jeu a comme une interactivité que le cinéma n'aura jamais. Maintenant que le jeu et le cinéma se prennent, se tiennent par la main et face à un bout de chemin ensemble. Ça, pour moi, c'est ce qui est excitant et l'avenir. Et c'est vrai qu'on en a parlé beaucoup. Je croyais que je faisais le plus beau métier du monde, mais je sais qu'il y en a un deuxième. Je ne dis pas que le mien n'est pas le plus beau métier, mais il y en a un autre que j'aimerais bien faire aussi. C'est-à-dire euh, être créateur de jeux, c'est absolument formidable. C'est vraiment, vraiment génial.
Thank you.